Praise the Lord, faithful. God is good, isn't it? Yes. Please turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, please. Praise God. And uh, Like I said, I want to thank Sister Mona for giving the sermon this morning. Praise God. And I'm just going to piggyback on what she was saying. God is good. God always confirms in some kind of way when he yes. wants a message done. Yeah. You know, I was actually operating and, and doing something that I wanted to do, you know, but yeah. God said this is what needs to be done. Amen. So I thank God, and I thank God for me listening to the Spirit. Praise God. Yes. In this chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, we're familiar with it. And before we begin, we want to give a title, Understanding Our Position. Understanding Our Position in Spiritual Warfare. Amen. We need to understand because some people teach us all types of things when it comes to spiritual warfare. So it's so sad that some of the things that's being taught that's not uh, scriptural. But we today are going to look at some things and look at our position. And we're going to focus on one of the main areas of, of our lives that the enemy will attack. Attack. Which is the most profound area of all our lives. And we'll get to that. But here in verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, let's read verse 10 through 12. That's all we need. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of our might. No, his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye, me, me and you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we don't need to... Well, let's read 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, which is every day, and having done all, to stand. We must understand our position in spiritual warfare. First, that verse 10 talks about we got to be strong in Him and not us. We walk by faith and not by sight. So we have to be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might. You know, people want to, we can't do nothing without the Lord. Folks want to take on these uh, principalities and these powers and these evil spirits on their own. Let me tell you something, you will not win. We will not win. We can't do nothing without Christ. We're going to see that the battle has already been won. All we got to do is put her in, in a position of faith and trust God. Far too many people are getting so stretched out because when spiritual warfare hits your family or, or hits you personally, we want to do things or try to look back at what we did and what we need to do and need, we need to do this better. It has nothing to do with that. A lot of times when we're attacked with spiritual warfare, God allows it to happen because he's trying to point out something in our lives. There might be some unconfessed sin or something that we're doing that we need to confess and we need to, to, to surrender to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to get away from those things, to lead those things away because he's moving us over here to a better place. Amen? It says, uh, don't run. we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not the person that you're upset with. And they, have, they don't have nothing to do with it. It's the spirit in them. And remember it says in Ephesians chapter 2, 2, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. We have, we're no disobedient anymore. We, we trust God. We believe God. We have the spirit. So just like the Holy Spirit leads us, the fallen spirit leads them. So that you don't look at the person or you feel as has done you wrong. And then it could be another believer that's actually deceived at the time Amen. and come up against you and it's under demonic influence. Amen? Amen. But we don't have that problem here because all of us, you know, we recognize these spirits when they try to come in. Amen? Not. <laughs> Praise God. So, our position to believers, listen, is, is to believe what Christ has already done. You know, we read in our, in our reading this morning Amen. what He's already done. Listen, we walk by faith, not by sight. Christ has completely overcome Satan and his host. His victory is ours only by faith. Now, we already know he's been victorious. Amen? 
we must realize that we are seated in Christ in heavenly places, far above all of Satan's principalities and powers, and the very power of God is available to us through the enjoyment of the Holy Spirit. Listen, we must sit before we can walk. In other words, sit in God's presence and learn of Him. And we must walk before we can stand. In other words, we got to walk with Him. In order for us to, to stand in the power of His might, we got to walk with Him. We got to learn of Him. We have to understand what He's already done. Ain't nothing that we've done, He's done it for us. All we got to do by faith is trust God and know what He has done. So this spiritual warfare that awaits all of us and maybe in our lives right now, and it probably is, we got to understand that we must, first of all, we must walk before we can stand. Listen, we must understand our, our, our spiritual position before, before anything happens. Listen, the only way to fight spiritual warfare is the whole message right here. The only way to fight spiritual warfare and the enemies of spiritual warfare is with spiritual weapons. The word and prayer. That's actually found in that same chapter, chapter 18. I mean, verse 18 of Ephesians 6. The word of God and prayer. These are our weapons. These are our weapons. There's nothing that we can do physically because the battle is not physically. It's a spiritual battle. Amen? And God has just defeated uh, Satan on the cross. He said, it's finished. Anything that you're going to do is done with, buddy. He died for the sins of the whole world. So we said it's finished. So we have to, we, or we take our position in what Christ has done for us. Watch this. Many people who have been saved must work our, you know, it says work at your own uh, salvation with fear and trembling. In Philippians chapter 2, of these, verse uh, 12. We, we got to work out and we must overcome the emotional and mental scars, watch this, that we have received in the world when we were under Satan's control. A lot of us went through a lot of stuff before we became saved. You're talking about being drugged through the, through the mud. Emotionally and mental. Uh, our, our minds and our, our, our emotional state has been taken through. Uh, uh, when it flipped us out. Amen? We've been still in some pain. Listen, the inner man has been born again. He's been born again and made anew. So the mind and the body must be conformed to the image of the inner man. So that's our responsibility. When he says work at your, work at your own salvation with fear and trembling, he has got it. God has already given us a new spirit. Now it's up to us to, number one, renew our mind and sacrifice by giving our flesh to God. Amen. This is the only way we're going to make it, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling you. We know the flesh is weak, and it is weak. But we must realize that in order to overcome and understand this, that the inner man is, we're new. For our spiritually, it's concerned about our mind must be renewed, and our body must be, uh, be given a living sacrifice every day to God. We get that. Let that sink in a little bit. It's got to sink in. We all must, we all have received much abuse during our slavery to Satan. But we are no longer under his control. And I want to read a different uh, uh, variation of that interpretation, I mean interpretation, but a different of that scripture reading we read this morning. It says, this Colossians 2, 13 to 15 says, when we were dead in our sins, and in uncircumcision of our sinful nature, God made us alive with Christ. We're alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with his regulations that we against that was was against us and stood opposed to us. Christ took it away, nailing it to the cross. And he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them openly triumphing over them by the cross where he said, it's finished. Before we believe in Christ, our nature was evil. We disobeyed, rebelled, and ignored God. Now and as a Christian, watch this. We have a new nature. God has crucified the old rebellious nature. 
he has replaced it with a new living nature, the penalty of sin. Listen, died with Christ on the cross. See, we're dead to sin, according to Romans chapter 6. We're dead to sin. But it seems like somehow sin keeps coming in, doesn't it? Amen. This tells us how intense this really is. This tells us that we really continue. We must die to self and live to Christ. Amen. Amen. We must realize that this is a battle. Nobody, if you're a believer, you're not exempt from this battle. Nobody can, we can help each other in the battle for us. Prayer is concerned, but God knows exactly what's going wrong with each and every one of us. He knows. It's our responsibility to work out, work out that salvation with fear and trembling, and we must go to God in New Israel. And repent, pray, and seek His face, and seek His understanding. Nothing's going to happen. Amen? Amen. God has declared us not guilty, and we need no longer live under sin's power. Sin does have a power, but we don't need to live under that power because sin was defeated. The penalty of sin is what? It's death. death. Christ has defeated them. Amen? Praise God. Amen. God does not take us out of the world or make us robots. We still feel like sinning. Listen, and sometimes we do sin. Amen? The difference is that before we, before we were saved, we were slaves to this sinful nature, weren't we? Man, we didn't even think about not doing what the flesh said. Wasn't no guilt feeling, we just did it. Amen? But now, we are free to live for Christ. That's why Galatians 2 tells us, Galatians 2, 20 says, Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. First of all, he says, I was cru I've been crucified with Christ. When he died, we died. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life that, that we now live in this flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and died for us. And that's how we're supposed to live, what he has done for us. So when we are, are faced with spiritual warfare, we got to understand something. It's already been, it's already been won by the Lord. Amen. We have the victory in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. But we must recognize our position that what Christ has done. And it's always, it's like, a, just remember, he saved us and we didn't save ourselves. Amen. 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 Yeah, amen. we got to remember that. Jesus. Praise God. Listen, if those areas of the past, those mental and emotional scars, like, say, maybe drug addiction, maybe some type of sexual uh, perversion, or some type of evil uh, uh, attitude, or something, some kind of mental problem. We got to understand, listen, that, listen, that if we don't deal with those errors, Satan will use those same errors and bring them back in our saved life now. That's, that'll be a doorway for him to come through. See, we don't deal with them. We got to deal with them. If we don't, we're leaving a door for him to get through. Amen? Amen. That's why we got to renew our mind, y'all. We got to renew our mind. Listen, mm. how do we deal with these emotional mental scars? Renew our mind by the word of God. And listen, if Satan, if Satan locates the areas like a lying spirit or, or mental, or mental hang-up or sexual perversions that have never been, never been surrendered to the uh, sanct sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, he uses the very errors to attack us. If we refuse to deal with these errors, this is where the majority of a spiritual warfare operates in. This is where it functions in. This is where it stems from. If we don't deal with these things. See, we're, old things pass away. Now, we know old things and pass away right away. You know, that's why the Word sanctifies us. Jesus said the word sanctifies them, sanctifies the believers. We got to keep hearing the word of God. If we're not hearing the word of God, what's going to happen is those old errors are not going to go anywhere. Because those the word of God sets us apart from those things. And this is why it's important that we keep on hearing the truth. Amen. And we, you know, we say that almost every week, no? Yes. But you know what? It's true. We got to keep on hearing the truth every week. Amen. Amen. Every day. Yeah. Every day, praise God. Remember when we said earlier, I want you to understand this. The inner man has been born again. He's been born again, right? The mind and the body 
now must be conformed to the image of the inner man. See, we're led by the inner man. We're not, we don't rely on our mind. We don't rely on our understanding. Because an inner man is where the Holy Spirit abides. And this is where we take our orders from. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen? I want you to look at a particular verse in here, and I'm, I'm going to explain it to you. Ephesians, no, not Ephesians. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's look at that right quick. Amen? And I want us to see the order that God has this in. And some of you might have missed it, but hopefully we can bring it back to your remembrance as we look at it. Amen? Verse 23 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 23. Will you there say amen, please? Amen. amen. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Here we go. Watch this. Let's read this carefully. He said, And the very God of peace, Christ, sanctify you wholly. He says, And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. Now watch this. You notice the order? It says spirit, soul, and body. This is the order that we ought to operate. Now, when we said earlier, when we became born again, our inner man was taken care of because God has given us his spirit. He has given us a new spirit. He's placed his spirit in that spirit. Amen? Amen. We became born again. But it's our responsibility, me and yours, listen, to we must uh, uh, protect and watch over our mind and our body. This is what we, when it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is what we by, by faith have to Amen. trust God in. Amen. You see? Amen. Spirit's taken care of. Yes. But, the, but the soul, the mind, and we always talk about the mind has so many components and we're going to look at the mind mainly today because I said earlier and I'm going to say it now. The mind is the first a contact Amen. the spiritual world in the believer's life. Amen. The mind, man. If he can get that mind, he got us. Amen? That's why it says repent. Change your mind. <laughs> Renew your mind. Watch this. So, we got if, 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 if the spirit's already taken care of, we got uh, our soul and our spirit can be under attack. And it will be on the deck if we don't do anything about it. We don't do anything about it. I see some people just come to church and never renew their mind. And you, you, they never really get off the ground in their walk. Never get off the ground. God really can't even use them. It's sad. It's really sad. We ought to grow. Desire to see the book of the word that you may grow that mind. But if we don't grow, if we don't seek God our, ourselves and work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, I mean, God saved us for a reason. It's so sad that God has given us gifts and visions and plans and purposes in our life, and we never utilize them because we don't ever do our part. You know? And see, that's why I'm saying that goes in a really tricky area because if the Spirit is in us, we can't help from doing the will of God. God will not leave us alone. He will allow that spiritual warfare and that frustration to be in your life and tell you, you can you hear me now? <laughs> Long before the phone company said that. Can you hear me now? God, I hear you now, and I'm going to hear you from here on out. <laughs> I'm listening to you. Amen? So today, we will concentrate, listen, on the error of our understanding. Remember, the title is Understanding Our Position. Why are we going to concentrate on this error? Because we do our understanding in our mind. A a amen? Do, you, do we do understanding anywhere else? No, it, it starts in our mind. Amen? Yes. Amen. Praise God. So we said that mind is, a, is, a, is a the strategic center where spiritual warfare and with the God of this world takes place. The mind is the first battleground. And that's where it all starts. So we got to focus on the mind, man. we got to look at the mind today and understand some things because that's where it starts at. 
lot of people, they saved, but sad to say their mind ain't saved. They're still walking around like an infant. And they're 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years old. Jesus. And wonder why they just losing every battle there is. You know, so, you know, if I say a particular verse, and you're familiar with that verse, um, you can actually repeat the verse or finish the verse because why? You've been hearing by faith. Amen. I know one verse I always say, if I say Proverbs 20, 27, some people know what how to have it's finished. And so certain other verses too, no weapon formed against us. So it's that memory, it's that, you know, it's been embedded in us. Yeah. We're hearing it over and over again. That's, med when you meditate, meditate just means you ponder over. You go over and over and over again until it gets down in your heart. Yeah. It gets in your mind. Amen. And that's what we need. Because when the enemy comes and he comes, he comes immediately, we know he throws us off guard, doesn't he? All of a sudden, he's there, trying to get us angry, trying to get us upset, trying to cause something for us to get out of character we talked about yes. last week. Take we talked about a couple weeks ago, taking offense. You know what I mean? we got to be ready. we got to be alert. The Bible says be aware of his devices or his mind games or his strategies or his plans. we got to be aware of these things. So he's going to attack that mind. The mind's got to be sharp, man. we got to be sharp. And we got to be able to have that thing, that thing renewed. Amen. The Bible says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Praise God. Amen. So we see here Satan knows that our minds is the key to controlling our lives. He knows that. That's why he spends most of his time. I mean, you take a person who's not born again. You said in your testimony. Can you imagine what they're dealing with? They have no idea. Who's behind the scenes? <laughs> I mean, you know, they... Oh, if they don't get born again, they're walking straight... Amen. Straight into hell. Amen. Right there, man. And don't even know it. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the God of this world, Satan, listen, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. See? So they're blind. They're blind to the things of God, but thank God we can see. Amen. Thank God we're not blind anymore. Let's act like it. Amen. The believers ought not to walk around like they're blind. <laughs> Praise God. You know, the Bible tells us, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh, so is he. So what does Satan want to do? Satan wants us to think the way he wants us to think. We use this verse almost every week, Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, what does it say? It says, God said, I have thoughts towards you, thoughts of peace and not evil. So what does Satan do? He don't want part, uh, thoughts of peace. He wants thoughts of evil. So you can have an expected answer. You can do what he wants you to do. That's the battle right there. That's what spiritual warfare is. Choose this day who you're going to serve. And we're taking all the information from God, or we're taking all the information from the enemy, guess who's going to be your leader? Either or. But we as believers, or we follow the Spirit of God. We trust in the Spirit of God. Amen? Isn't God good? Satan wants to listen. Satan wants to poison our minds uh, with unbelief and, and lying strongholds, so he can manipulate our minds, our emotions, and our bodies. That's what he wants, man. If he can poison us, see, we we have a mechanism in us now, which is the Holy Spirit. And you know, when I'm faced with things now, and I know it's spiritual warfare, because the, the, the Lord has, you know, we 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 know when things ain't right. Here's something I learned a long time ago. If I just hold still and open, don't open my mouth and recognize where is this coming from? Is this the character of God? God wouldn't do this. I'm talking to myself. I ain't saying nothing. But this is the conversation that's going on inside my heart. Wait a minute. Who's this from? The Bible says guard your heart of all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. we got to guard our heart. I'm telling you, if we don't guard our heart, which is our mind, which is our soul, same thing, but we don't guard it, man, it's, it's over. It's over for us. It's over for us. It's over. Amen? Listen, praise God. Lately in the news, we've been hearing so much about mental illness. And what? Amen. Well, I'm going to clear some things up today. <laughs> so help us all understand mental illness. And one of the things I did, I just took the word mental, and I took the word illness, and I defined them. Now watch this. Mental means relating to the mind, intellectual, psychological. Illness means this, 
a disease of a person, a disease or, or of a person or period of sickness affecting the body or mind, attack, affliction, disorder, and disability. Now you can put them together. Relating to the mind, there's some type of disease. Well, I don't know, would, would you say sin is a disease? Amen. <laughs> and don't, wouldn't you say that we were all born into sin? So it sounds like to me, when you say illness is an attack or affliction, and our mind's under attack, it's afflicted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mental illness can come in all types of degrees, but I believe a lot of us suffer from mental illness. Amen. Especially if we don't know our mind. Amen. We have an illness. Yes. <laughs> come on. Absolutely. <laughs> we have an affliction. If we're not, you know, guarding the Lord of our mind and trusting in the Lord and trusting in His Word, we, we mentally, we're, we're ill. Now you look at these folks that did this damage up there in Texas and you know people blaming on mental illness. Let me tell you something. Yeah, there's a mental illness, but this is a great, great degree of also uh, uh, demonic oppression and demonic uh, uh, possession. Let's understand that now. You know, none of us, that's at the normal. That's for us to go around and say, I want to kill somebody. You know what I mean? It might come through our mind at a, at a moment of anger, but we don't carry it out. That means the enemy has taken that person over. Their, their soul and their mind is under his control. Amen. So let's understand that right now. Yes. So we got to realize that, see, hate, hate is nothing. Hate is a learn. It's learned. It's not nothing that you pick up, you know, when you were born. Here's hate, take jealousy. No, that, no, no. It's something that is learned. So we got to realize that somehow, some way, people, mental illness is, 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 is common among the world. Yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. Amen. We as believers, if something tragic or a crisis happens that really throws us out, that really throws us off, you know, we are very thin line from going over the, overboard to really do some damage to, to somebody. You don't know how you might react on a situation where it just, you know, uh, uh, God forbid a, a, a tragic situation happens in your family and, and you witness it. You know that close from some tripping over. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I mean, thank God he doesn't allow those things to happen. Yeah. Thank God he hears our prayers. Thank God we're under his protection. Yeah. That's why you see people who kill themselves, I mean kill people end up killing themselves. Because yeah. they realize, well, what did I do? Yeah. How could I have done this? Because I was angry. Somehow Satan got in there and got them all confused. This is why we need the power of the Holy Spirit, man. To protect us from these things, because it's true. This is true, amen? Amen. Watch this. Mental illness, let's define it from Webster's dictionary. Conditions involving change in emotions, change in our thinking, our behavior, or a combination of these. It's associated with the stress and or, or problems functioning in social and social work, I mean social or work or family or activities. Mental illness is common. Mental disorders are usually defined by a combination of how a person behaves, feels, perceives, and thinks. That's almost everybody, man. Come on. Amen. Types of mental illness. Listen, types of mental health problems. Here they are. Anger. Don't you get angry? Anxiety. Don't you worry? Amen. Don't we worry? Come on. Right. Panic attacks. You know, come on, this is mental illness. Sure. You know, bipolar disorder. Hey. Uh, you know, Ooh. just take the word pie means two. Sure. So, you have, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is James chapter 1, verse 8. A double minded Amen. man, too, Amen. Amen. is unstable in all his ways. Right. Now, haven't you and I been double minded? And we talk about bipolar. Come on now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we got to look at this thing really close here now. Satan wants us if he could be triple minded. He doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, borderline personality disorder. Ooh. Depression. Drugs can alter your mind. Come on. Watch this. The five most common mental health disorders. Number one, depression. You said that in the testimony. Amen. Depression. Oh, Who in here has been oh. depressed, man? Come on. Amen. Come on. Hey, We're always making this thing look like it's, it's them. 
But Satan attacks, he doesn't care. Remember, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We have to be aware of his devices. He has so many schemes and tricks up his sleeve that try to cause us to throw us off balance. This is the spiritual warfare. But we must remember our position in the Lord. He has done it. We just got to find out where it's done at, where he told us that in his word. Because it's in here. He said, I set my word in the hill of them. Doesn't it feel so much good when you hear the word of God? Amen. You can be down now. You hear something from the word of God. It's like, oh, praise God. Thank you can throw your shoulders back and stand up tall now. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Man, we need that word, man. We need man. just like I said, just think about the people who are not getting the word of God. Oh man. Man. Wow. The young man who shot those people in Texas and in, in Ohio. Ain't no word coming in there. No. Nope. It was word coming, it was evil word. Amen. Different word, yeah. And it can it, it, it consumed them to the point where they took a life. Satan came to kill, rob, and destroy. So you know where that was from. You know where it was from. Watch this. I said the five most common ones, I said depression. Here's the, the next one. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Worry. The Bible is for believers. The Bible, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Worry. Take no thought. Don't worry. Do we worry? Come on. Yes. <laughs> you know? These are, these are, this is what? The five most common Mental health problems. People suffer. We suffer from the watch this. Eating disorders. Eating disorders, man. Some folk can stay in the house all day and eat. Might not come out in months. Amen. Yeah. Oh. A couple so months go by. More than six, seven months go by. They might not be able to fit through the door. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Listen. Amen. Substance abuse. Oh, yeah. And here's the fifth one, watch this, watch this. Attention disorders, ADD, ADHD. Now let me tell you something right here. Now, now today in the society, if, you're, if you come down with ADD and AHAD, what is it, ADHD, they give you something. Amen. They give you something, right? Right. When I was coming up, my mom and pop gave me something. And it wasn't a form of no pill. Yeah, right. Spare a ride? You're going to spoil that child. Yeah, amen. 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 I mean, I remember sitting, I remember specifically when I was a little boy. I mean, I was like an active little kid, and I was, and I'm sitting up there, beating on there, you know. I was just always moving, active. Now, in the day, they would have filled me up with drugs, man. Yep. We don't understand this young yep. man. Yep. He has a problem, he won't hold still. Well, it's because some of these teachers don't understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't understand. Some of them don't have children themselves. <laughs> they don't know how to raise any children. You know, they want to do their career first and never really know how a child is. I've never seen, if you had a, if you, you know, those, we had a child and we have children. If they were from two years old to five years old, never cried, never gave you no problem, never got in no trouble, Nice. Something's wrong. <laughs> You're like, come on, Johnny, we got to go down to the hospital, man. I don't know what's wrong with you. You know, you, you think something's wrong. This is a normal reaction. This is normal reaction. But see, now the day we're calling, we're, we're actually looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for healing in all the wrong places. Yes. If we just get that word of God in there, oh man, God will do some wonders. Watch this show. Praise God. Millions of people suffer from disorders in the United States and around the world. You know, remember the movie, Hot and Tina Turner? What well, love got to do with it? Remember that movie? There was one scene, there was one scene, that probably some of you remember. There was one scene there, she was sitting in the mirror doing her hair. And they was fussing, you know, I was always fussing with her, trying to control her mind and everything. And he walks up behind her, she had said something like, she gave him some kind of indication like, you know, she's out of here if he don't act up. So he walked behind her and said, you know what? And he pointed on her head and said, look, I'm in here. Wow. I'm all, I'm in your mind, <laughs> Tina. Come on now, check this out. Now watch. <laughs> well, how would you feel if somebody want to try to get up here and control you? Man. Think about it. How would you react? Crazy. I want you to do this. No, you're going to do this. No. Come on. No. What's your reaction going to be? Uh, okay, buddy. Yeah, you're out. You're out. <laughs> come on now. Come on now. Think you're in. Shouldn't we take the same response when the enemy comes at us? Yes. 
But the reason why we don't recognize it, because we don't have the truth of the Word of God. We need more truth of the Word of God. We need to understand what the Bible says. This is our deliverance right here. The truth. You should know the truth. It's to make you free. So we understand it and know that. And this is one of the biggest things. Here's another thing, too. Uh, uh, I heard a song uh, the other day, a video, I saw a video by uh, Cardi B, whatever that's the name. And uh, it was disturbing because the language she was using and the way she was expressing her anatomy. Now you take a child who doesn't understand this and hears this. They think it's normal. Yeah. So they grow up and what do they do? They disrespect women. They disrespect themselves. They kill each other. We gotta understand something. There's a movie out right now called The Good Boys. It's three little boys. Uh, uh, they're all like 12, 13, 14 years old. It's playing right now. And this movie is disgusting because it has these kids acting like adults. They're talking like adults. They're doing adult things. They're, they're in the things that a kid ought not to be in. Now you take another kid who sees this movie and gonna think this is the norm. But it's not the norm. Because their mind is not mentally ready for this kind of stuff. So what's going to happen? You and I know that it's a movement in the movie industry and the entertainment business. It's to take the minds of our young people and old people and control them. Amen. It is. Amen. But if we don't do anything about it, I mean, some of the things that's going on. When I heard Cardi B talk about what she was, I said, oh my goodness, she really said that? And she said it again. Wow. Part of her anatomy is all this. Get out of here. That's ridiculous, man. Wow. But this is where people are. This is this is this is what this is what the unbeliever is thinking about. This is what the unbeliever is consuming in their thought life. Amen. So there's no respect. There's no morality. There's no understanding. Whatever goes, goes. And this is why you see so much disaster in the world today. Every time you turn the TV on, somebody shot, somebody was stabbed Amen. the other day. Amen. Well, come on. What is going on? It's an uproar over in China, a uh, Hong Kong right now. Been going on for weeks. You got this going on, you got that going on. There's a mental problem in the world. And what it is, they need to repent. They need their mind to be renewed with the word of God. Amen. Talk about spiritual warfare. Satan ain't got to do nothing. Man. He don't have to do anything. <laughs> he don't have to do anything. And it's, uh, the sad part about it is a lot of us believers who are not confessing and surrendering to some of these yeah, old right. things that should be yeah. passed away by now. Amen. We allow them to linger on and we wonder why we're suffering over here. We wonder why the enemy is allowing these, these attacks to come in and attack us because what are we doing and what are we not doing? We got to grow up. We got to be who we say we are. Yeah, you know, we're not going to be perfect. No, we're not going to be perfect. But it, it's come to a point in our life that we're going to be... We're going to be faced with some situations and make some uh, decisions in our lives. And, and they're and they coming. They're coming, church. They're coming. Amen. They are coming. Watch this. Look at, look at Mark. I'm just going to give you a couple of verses. Uh, and just stay with me because I'm going to be moving pretty fast, okay? Look at Mark 7. Mark 7. We looked at this the other, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, look at Mark 7, I believe, 15, I believe it is. Uh, is it 15? There is nothing from without a man that entered to him that can defile him. But the things will come out of him, those are they that defile the man. Now we know we, we you know, Jesus said take no thought. You know thoughts is coming, right? Yeah. Oh, every day we're confronted with all kinds of things. They come in from the outside, but they don't get to come out. Us. Because, you know, we answer thoughts with the Holy Spirit. We don't answer thoughts that are not going to draw our mind by our understanding of it. We compare that. That's why, but see, the Word of God is like a common denominator. Anybody doing fractions, that's like the common denominator between 8 and 16. The common denominator is, is 16. Amen? You know, 16 are going to 16 one time. 8 are going to 16 how many times? Two times. So it's the common denominator. The Word of God is the common denominator. That's how we must govern up these things when these voices come in. Okay, what's the common denominator? The Word of God. If these things ain't matching up, one of them, somebody got to go. One of these thoughts got to go. Now watch this, praise God. You see that? Watch this. He says here, go to, 20, go to 21. 20. Then he said, that which cometh out of a man 
that defiles the man. See, Satan is the, he's the tempter. He wants to, he wants that thing to come out. He wants to get us upset. He wants to get us off, off the, you know, straight and narrow. He wants to get us off the, uh, uh, trick us and deceive us. So what comes out is one of his tactics, one of his controls, you see? And once that happens, we're in trouble. That's going to make us unclean. That's going to defile us. Look at 21. For from within, out of the heart of man, out of the soul of man, out of the mind of man, look at the first thing. Proceeds evil thoughts. We ain't got to read no more. Got adulteries, fornications, whatever. Look, it, it started with a thought first. <laughs> this is the spiritual warfare. Take no thought. We say it every week, 2 Timothy chapter 10, verse 5. It says, uh, uh, cast down imaginations and every high thing that's offered itself against the knowledge of God and bring it to captivity every thought. We gotta, we, this is how, this is spiritual warfare. How many times, you, look, look, you walk through that door today and you've seen some things that wasn't right, that was evil. And you might have said, oh, this makes me sick. One day do this, one day. They can't do this and they can't do that. They don't know any better. Their minds are blinded by the God of this world. And see, spiritual warfare, even when they know that they're in spiritual warfare, we can pray for them. Amen. We can pray for them. The Lord cover and protect them. Yeah. Protect their minds, man. Amen? Watch this. God is good, isn't he? Look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We're still here. Yes. Yes. I heard two yeses. I see more than two people out here. Yes. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. Uh, chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We heard this before. Let's hear it again. He said, be careful for nothing. Or don't be anxious for nothing. Or don't worry about nothing. That's what it says. Okay. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, look, let your request be known unto God. Our request has to stop being known to everybody else. Complaining. Why are they doing that? Why did that happen? Let it be known unto God. He's the only one can fix it. <laughs> we sing the song, Jesus can fix it. But we make it known our request to everybody else who don't really have no time, don't really care what we say. <laughs> they got things to do. Everybody's busy. Make your request known unto God. Now watch this. He tells us how to think. Here he tells us how to think. He says, And the peace of God will pass of all understanding, so keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. We hear that almost every time. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, things are just, things are pure, things are lovely, mm -hmm. things that are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, look, think on these things. Amen. See? This is how he, he tells us how to think. Somebody tell you, this is what you want to do. We can only know how to think if our thinking has been reprogrammed. Amen. Because if we don't renew our mind, we don't know how to think. Amen. We're going to be relying on our own understanding about something. But God said, what well, vengeance belongs to me? You know? This weapon's coming at me. It's destroying me. No weapon formed against me. It's going to prosper. If I don't understand it, it's going to prosper. It's going to destroy me. So I said, okay, okay. This is serious. This is serious. Oh, my goodness. Watch this. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's go to um, praise God. Matthew. Go back to Matthew. Well, with that mark, go to Matthew. Go to Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter 11. We heard this. This is good, though. This is good. Because a lot of us are laboring, meaning a lot of us are trying to work out these things. We're trying to understand some of these things ourselves. Stop laboring. We can't do it. We can't fix it. Stop sitting there thinking, where did you go wrong? I didn't do this. Or I didn't, you know, I usually read three chapters a day. I only read two. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Don't get out of it. Don't pay that any mind. It has nothing to do with none of that. Nothing. No. That's, that's legalism. Amen. Wow. You got to do a certain thing for things to be right. No way. You, a lot of us are finding out now when you read this word of God, you can do all right and all hell breaks up. Amen. Amen. We must do much. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. Jesus will not be this to what he suffered. Why can't we? Amen. Where did I say go? Matthew, Matthew 11. 11. Look at uh, 28. We know familiar with this, right? Matthew 11, 28 says, Come unto me, Jesus speaking. No 
Oh, ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'm in a spiritual warfare now, man. I'm telling you, it's overwhelming my mind. I'm not saying personally, but you know, there's always something going on. I just Amen. trust God. Amen. I'm just saying in general. Yes. You know, you're going through some stuff. People are going through some stuff right now. Come unto him, that's the first thing he said. Not unto you. Come unto him. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden. Listen, and I will give you rest. You wonder why you don't have any rest. Because you never came unto him. This is really, think about that. You look at it like that. I'm going through this thing and it's tearing me down. I, don't, I, can't, even, I can't sleep. I'm just I'm tired. I'm, I don't want to be up. What is going on? Come unto him. Come unto him. See, he says, listen. Take my yoke upon you, my truth, listen, and learn of me. You see that? Learn what I got to say about this situation. Isaiah 1. Verse 18 says, the Lord says, let us come reason together. In other words, you come sit down and find out that I'm right. <laughs> Remember, man don't listen. Man don't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how we're supposed to live. Let's finish reading this. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. And you shall find rest. Listen, you can find rest unto your souls. I mean, I, I look, when I'm going through something, my soul needs some rest. Amen. I got to look at this thing through the eyes of God. What is God saying about this situation? I need some rest bad, man. Remember when it says in Genesis chapter 3, y'all, it says, let's, let me finish reading 30. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Guess what? The yoke of the world ain't easy. Amen. The yoke of the world puts so much pressure on you. And you know, you gotta be, you gotta do this, you gotta look this way, you gotta have this kind of car, you gotta have this kind of money. That's the that's listen, even if you get all that, you still ain't got no. <laughs> I mean, you know, somebody will tell them that the first time, but they don't know. Man, if I just get this, it doesn't matter. What profit you gain this whole world lose your soul, man? man. Wow. Doesn't profit nothing. You know, in Genesis chapter 6, 5 says, God saw that the witness of man was great in the earth. Mm -hmm. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. That sounds like mental illness to me. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. That sounds like mental illness to me. It repented that he even made man. The heart is deceitful, wicked above all things, Jeremiah 17, 9. Amen. Amen. Desperately wicked. That sounds like mental illness. I'm telling you, we we got to get our minds right. I, I, I feel sad for people who go up to these churches all throughout the land, don't even open a book. They talk about things that's not even in the Word of God. They, they talk about doctrines that's not even a doctrine in the Word of God. Some kind of teaching, some kind of heresy has nothing to do with the Word of God. And these are confessing believers. Confessing believers. Lord have mercy. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. We're still here. Amen. We getting this? What's our position in spiritual warfare? Renew your mind and give your body to the Lord. That's it. That's it. Prayer. We got to pray. We got to pray. Uh, Ephesians uh, 4, look at 17. We read this the other day. I want you to look at it again. Look at this. This is the mind of a believer. So this is the, this is what we ought not to be. Look at verse 17. This I say and testify on the Lord that ye henceforth, don't see, don't walk, not as other Gentiles. Gentiles is a term for non-believers. Don't walk the way they walk. Listen. And the vanity and the emptiness of their mind. Our mind ought not to be empty. <laughs> it ought to be filled with the Spirit. It ought to be renewed with the Word of God. So our mind ought not to be empty. Listen, these people who their mind is empty, having the understanding, their understanding is darkened. Our understanding is not darkened. We just learned a whole lot today. Every time we hear the Word of God, our understanding is enlightened. 
what they understand is dark and listen, it's being, it's being alienated from the life of God. We know what kind of life God wants us to have and wants us to live. Amen? That's the struggle within itself. Because we're, we're, we're learning about ourselves, we're growing, we're understanding. Amen? He says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Now, praise God, we don't have no ignorance in us. We got the very power of God. To, we are partakers of His divine nature. Ain't no ignorance in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Amen. Because of the blindness of their heart. Our hearts are not blind anymore. Though. It's not blind. We was blind, but what? Now we see. We see now. Isn't God good? God is so good, y'all. Let me tell you something. In closing, we have to really take to heart uh, our position. What does God say? What is God saying about this? What's going on? He says everything about everything. You want to find it? It's in the book, man. It's in amen. the Word of God. Yeah, amen. We got to spend more time in His truth. You know, I, I just recently just went through spiritual warfare and God is finally, I mean, it, it got so hard on me sometimes, I would just fall asleep. I just want to lay down because it was too much. I didn't want to go to a realm where I start to think, this is why this is happening, why that's happening. So I just wanted to sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? And every time, listen, and every time I got up, and you know, I actually found out that was scripture. I found out it was scripture. Go to sleep. It's in the Word of God. Let me look at it. Let me just look at it. Right quick. Look at Mark 4. And I, I didn't know it till just now. <laughs> it, just, it just came to me. Look at Mark 4. Um, I'm, I'm talking about heavy, heavy spiritual warfare, you guys. You know, for, for the last three or four years. Yes. You hear me? Yes. Last three or four years. Wow. Oh, I'm like, when is it going to stop? But it all came to a head. All came to understand it. Why? Because I persevered. I wasn't going to stop. So you, if you, you know, first of all, you got to believe who he is. And, and he's a rewarder of those who tell you seek him. You can't give up. you got to keep on pressing on, man. you got to keep on going. I mean, I come this far. I ain't about to turn around now. I'm going to keep on going forward. So I kept pressing on, holding on, and he rewarded me. And, you know, I would when it got too hard, I would just go to sleep. Not going to sleep in word. But I had to shut myself down before I got into worry. Come on now. You know, because you sit there, you know, the, 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 the guy with the, the thinker statue, he's trying to figure it out. He ain't never going to figure it out. It ain't up to him to figure it out. Amen. But this is what God gave me. Look at Mark 4. Look at Mark 4. It says here in 20, la, 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 26. 26, 27 says, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep. <laughs> and should sleep. Listen. And rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up and he knoweth not how. Now what I'm saying is, by him sleeping in the case you ain't worrying. Because it ain't up to us to bring forth the blessing. Yeah, amen, amen. It's up to God. So I went to sleep. It was so heavy on me sometimes, I got I just would lay down and go to sleep. And every time I got up, when I got seriously, when I got up, God gave me a little bit more uh, uh, answer to what was going on. So that helped me not to allow my own understanding. You see yes. what I'm saying? Yes. It wasn't my position, and it's never our position to try to figure things out. It's already been won. Amen. So I slept, and then the answer came. I don't know how it came, but God was working on it. He want us out of the way. Amen. Praise God, church. Amen. I hope that this message was an uh, inspiration for all of us. Amen. We can go on and on. I mean, I, I didn't really get a chance to finish the whole Ephesians chapter 6 where it talks about the armor of God, the, 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 our, our, the belt of truth, the, the feet shot with the preparation of gospel of peace, the hammer of salvation, the Amen. breastplate of rest. We didn't get on that. Maybe some next time. Amen. But we need to understand one thing right now. The battle don't belong to us, but belongs to the Lord. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The way we overcome is what? It's through what? Our weapons are what? The Word of God and Amen. prayer. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord.